what you're looking at is the first completed flap skin and beneath it is the sheet of aluminum that will be used for constructing the second flap skin. Uh, the flap skins are a little bit larger in size so unfortunately it takes two complete sheets of aluminum to be able to fabricate a complete flap skin. At this point the layout is completed for the second flap skin and we'll get ready to go ahead and start doing our bending. One thing I'll point out that I hadn't uh, tried doing before but it uh, turned out to be quite useful is in addition of course to the normal sight line that I've got I've gone ahead and added in the tangent lines as well. I realized while I was doing my bend testing that if I go ahead and add these in uh, this will give a good indication of how the bend is progressing. Okay so we'll go ahead and get started with our first bend which is a short side of uh, 107 degrees. You'll notice that I'll be using a couple of suction cups uh, while the sheet metal is flat. I found that uh, can help when I'm dealing with these longer pieces of metal. Yeah, it took a few minutes to get everything set up with having to deal with this extra extra little bit that I have to sort of fold up out of the way because of space constraints. But we're all set up now. We're shooting for a bend of 107 degrees. In the course of my testing with my test sections, one of the things I realized I could do to help verify that my bends are going as expected is to mark the tangent lines. Uh, I've always marked my sight lines. I've never really taken the time to mark my tangent lines before, but I realized that you know, even after a bend, if my bend is done properly, then these tangent lines should uh, be in the same location. So what I wound up doing is essentially take a measurement from the end of the uh, end of the bend uh, and find out you know how far the distance is to one of my one of my tangent lines and then subtract three millimeters off because of course that's the radius of the bend and then I've also calculated of course what my tangent line is here plus what my in addition my tangent line here and if I've done my bend correctly, then, then the calculated distance from here to here should be the same as the distance from here to the end of my bend minus 3 millimeters. And I did do that check on both ends, and both of my uh, the measurements were, were within a millimeter of each other, which I'm more than satisfied with that. So that tells me that you know I got this initial bend correct, and I can go ahead and do the bend on the, on the far end now. Now, of course, unfortunately, since once I bend that far end, I'm sort of trapped. So I can still go ahead and do the do the check after I make my second bend over on this over on this end over here. I can still go ahead and do my check. Uh, but of course, if if I do happen to get this wrong and say the uh, the measurement from from here to this tangent line here doesn't line up, of course I'm I'm out of luck at that point. But of course, if I do know that ahead of time, then I can still save most of my aluminum for for use on something else. So I'll get set up to do my uh, second bend, and this bend is uh, is a uh, is 90 degrees. At this point we've got the adjustment done. Uh, one final check just to make sure that the uh, nose of the brake lines up with my sight line all along. And everything looks good. So again we are shooting for a 90 degree bend.
looking pretty good right there, so we'll go ahead and pull it. So I've gone through and checked my measurements. Uh, the angle here came out quite well. Uh, came out at 90 degrees uh, within maybe plus or minus a degree. Uh, also did my tangent to tangent check, or my tangent, yeah, the, do a check of the measurement from this tangent line to this tangent line and compare that to the uh, to the edge of this flange to this tangent line minus three millimeters and everything came in quite well. Uh, calculated was 318.5, uh, I had 319 on both sides. But I do want to point out one thing that actually gave me a bit of a scare for a sec because I thought I had made a mistake. Uh, you'll notice the distance initially I had made my measurement on the distance from here to here and of course this this measurement came out the way I had expected. However, I'm going to slide over here to the other end where I also have my tangent line marked. I'm going to try and zoom in on this zoom in on this point right here which again is, uh, same type of measurement but if you compare this measurement what I had on the other side, I actually had this tangent line marked in the wrong position. It's actually off by a couple of millimeters. I'm not sure what it was that I did, but when I went back I had this tangent line here that I could use as a reference. Uh, I did my measurements and you know realized that, that the 319 was okay. Uh, using this one was a couple of millimeters and of course this is always what sort of the scary thing about uh, building something like this is making some mistake that you don't even see in spite of your double and even triple checking. I mean in this case of course, the really important line was the sight line, but still, uh, I made this type of measurement in multiple locations, and for some reason, I just did not see this error right here. So, you know, fortunately, I had a backup where I could, you know, still do the confirmation and everything's okay. But, yeah, that's always one of the scary things when you're scratch building something like this because, uh, you know, if I'd, have done the, if I'd have made this mistake on the sight line, uh, it's hard to say if I'd have kept the part or not. I, it would have only been a couple of millimeter error. I'd have probably gone ahead and gone through with it. But of course, you can see maybe doing some a similar type of silly mistake uh, in some area that some place that's always a little bit more critical. So, what I'll do now is go ahead and get set up. We'll get this um, uh, this part bent right here. Uh, the big thing on this one is it'll be a two-part bend. I can only bend to 130 degrees uh, in my break, and then actually I'll do something a little different than what I did in my test sections. Is actually I'm going to go ahead and do an outside bend. Uh, using the brake instead of trying to press it down with the board. When I tried that on my first flap, uh, you know, it was pretty obvious I wasn't going to be able to press it down, and I really should have known because I've dealt with a similar thing when I built my stabilizer. Uh, so we'll get this uh, get this bin set up. And now we'll go ahead and get the sheet metal put in and get ready for our third bin. That's probably about as good as we're going to get. So we'll go ahead and get the part pulled. So this is the flap pulled out of the brake. Uh, took a measurement. It's currently anywhere from 115 to about 120 degrees. Uh, I'd like to have seen 130, but, uh, but this will be close enough that I'll be able to go ahead and get things set up to do an, an outside bend. So we're set up now for a reverse bend. Which essentially, the leaf of the brake will be coming in from, from down here and trying to push this closed as much as I can. I know it's not possible to get this completely in line, but it'll, uh, 
uh, from here to here, but it'll be pretty close. Now to ensure that I don't crush my inner, crush my diameter as much as possible, I've got these quarter inch pads uh, that are laying in here, which I demonstrated those when I was doing the test sections earlier. So we'll go ahead and get this started. Uh, this will definitely probably not be a very elegant process, but you should get the job done. To me, this is looking pretty good. I don't think we're going to get much more out of it. Looks like the outside has withstood it, so we'll take some measurements and see how everything looks. So this is the second flap uh, bent as far as I'm going to be able to take it, at least with the uh, tools that I've got. As far as the actual dimensions go, uh, this dimension right here was supposed to be 333 millimeters and hit it dead on on both sides. Uh, other side had a little bit more variation. The target was 317 from here to here, uh, but I actually got 316 on one side and 318 on the other. So again, that's uh, that's more than acceptable for me. Uh, the angle, I mean, ideally we were shooting for an angle of, of uh, 17 degrees inside here. Of course, even even with the uh, even with pressure from the outside, there's just a limit on how far I can take that. Uh, actually, uh, came out to about 25 degrees. Uh, but I don't think there will be any problems as far as once I get the ribs in here, uh, it'll be able to pull down just fine. Actually, one thing I forgot to do before I uh, had done my metal bend, I actually meant to trim this down here. Uh, we're probably running into sort of a little bit of an awkward situation if you're leaving this flat on the table. So, uh, a couple of things I actually had to do to deal with this. Of course, my line was on the back side. I had to transfer it onto the other side. Uh, plus also, of course, get this in a convenient position where it can be cut. And the way I worked around that was to got a couple of uh, large angle blocks uh, here, and I've just got a couple of uh, held, got this held up with just a couple of magnets. So had it mounted on this side, had it attached from this side here when I was doing my layout, so this would be laying flat, and then flipped around uh, to the other side so that I've got this out at a nice convenient angle so that I can go ahead and do this little bit of trimming. Okay, so the edge has been trimmed down right here, so just as a quick rough check just to make sure it looks like everything did form up properly, this is the uh, test rib that I did, and I've just got it clamped on with a few Clecos here just to make sure everything looks like it's going to fit up well, and I'm satisfied with what I'm seeing here. So this is as far as I'm going to take the flaps uh, for the moment. I'm going to go ahead and focus on the uh, aileron skins next. Uh, a couple of things I just wanted, wanted to point out here real quick. One thing I've found real useful is uh, using what's called this uh, mini stretch wrap, which you can find this on Amazon. It's usually used for moving. Uh, it's just a uh, very thin film, almost like a saran wrap. But it comes in real handy when you need to uh, uh, bundle things up. So for example, you know, I don't want this, want this flap just sort of flopping around all over the place, so this is a nice way to tie that down without having to actually use tape. And of course also the extra uh, piece parts that I've got here, my test section, my uh, form that I'll use for, for bending more uh, templates, or bending more uh, rib forms, and of course also my, my test rib form as well. Uh, go ahead and have these all bundled up so they don't get scattered around when I, at some point, get back to this. So that's all I'll cover on this for now.